Now, Doug Barnard is a young man who travels the world and he takes us with him on his journey via YouTube and Instagram and all these social media platforms. Well, he was recently in Sri Lanka. He's currently in Pakistan and he joins us right now on the screen. It's Doug Barnard. Hi there. Welcome. Hey, Pat. Thank you so much for having me on. Happy to be here. I yeah. appreciate it. It's so cool to see you on YouTube. I see you on Instagram and then I sent you a message and we hooked this up and here we are talking. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad we could make it happen. Now, uh, yeah, I want to focus on Sri Lanka because I was recently in Sri Lanka as well. So uh, oh, I've yeah. had a bit of, I was there for about a week. Uh, so I'm thinking you were there a bit longer than me. So let's talk about Sri Lanka and uh, how we can sort of uh, inform our, our listeners and viewers uh, what to see and do when there. But firstly about your job as a travel vlogger. That's basically what's on your business card? Correct. Yep. So I've been... Uh... I've had a YouTube channel for a little over three years now, but I've been doing it as my full-time job for about two years now. What did mum and dad say when you said, I want to be a full-time <laughs> YouTuber and a vlogger and travel the well, world? It seems to be working for you. Well, it's working out. It's working out okay, thankfully. But, um, you know, it's funny because I had a full-time job in New York uh, when I started the channel. So I had kind of a year to ramp up to eventually taking it full-time. And in that time, I was kind of teaching my my parents about you know <laughs> the business behind it and how you know in this day and age you can actually make a living from it and i actually ended up getting laid off from my job during covid in new york uh -huh. so it was kind of a uh this uh blessing and a curse i yes, guess yeah. you know it, it kind of propelled me into doing it because i that job was no more and so i said it's kind of now or never and, and went for it right and, you, and you're uh, you're doing a great job you're a natural you're a natural doug you got this great way of connecting with the audience and uh you tell those stories really well i've actually just got a tiny bit of uh you on youtube here let's just have a little listen hello everybody this is doug and i'm here in a new place for me i'm in sri lanka and i'm in the capital colombo sri lanka now if you guys saw my previous video which was my journey all the way from new york i was teasing a very special guest in this upcoming series of videos this from sri lanka well, here she is. Drum roll, please. It's my sister, Mallory. Oh. There you go. You, that's right. That's the one with your sister, which I have your sister here as well doing the next day, I think, in Sri Lanka. I think you should start the day. No, you start. <laughs> no, I'm not ready for that. It's too squinty. Okay, just give us a little intro. Okay, today is day two. or officially first full day. First full day. Um, We're about to have breakfast. Apparently, I'm going to learn how to eat with my fingers. So Are you excited? I'm very excited. Should we start there? When you travel and food, different foods around the world, what sort of focus points, food, experience, what do you look for when you go to a new place? Uh, you know, I, I think I, I just look for the the most unique things, you know, and the, and the things that are most different from from the perspective I come from, from a Western background. Um, so things like that, like eating with my fingers, which is, is pretty unusual to eat like rice and curry and stuff with fingers. You know, it's it's unusual to people from back home. I look for that kind of thing, and I look for, um, you know, those experiences that make people say "wow," and then and try to you know show how it is that everyday normal people you know live life there. Yeah, yeah. So, what was your job that you said you were laid off on a job? Was that in media or presenting or anything in this field? No, not at all. I, I was actually, oddly enough, my job was uh, I was in charge of a product category on walmart.com and that product category was pet uh, flea and tick products. All right, okay. So complete jump to something new. Um, Super random, uh, yeah. Right, right, because I had that thought as you were saying, uh, you were answering the question beforehand that maybe well, there was some sort of connection to what you're doing now. Uh, so there you are, you had the courage to take on a new thing and it's working for you. So the food and eating with your fingers, the, the, the Sri Lankans, as you say, it might seem a bit weird, but there is a bit of method to it or reason because they're sort of uh, getting the rice and, and, and integrating all the different flavors into the little sort of ball of food and off you go. That's why they use their fingers. Totally. They, they, they told me when I was there, they're like, you're not going to get the same, the same taste yeah. if you don't eat with your fingers. You got to get a little bit of everything and you, you know, have that dexterity there to, to make it the perfect bite. And it, it is a skill. It's an acquired skill for yes. sure. Like I, I feel sloppy when I'm doing it, but the, they're they're pros over there. Yeah, yeah. The exact same experience for me that you know they, they said you need to use your fingers because that's how you get the flavors. And I was a bit sloppy when doing it. They said I was quite sort of cute the way I sort of try to do it all sort of slowly. <laughs> um, but a wonderful culture and very friendly people in Sri Lanka feel very welcome. Uh, you know, uh, welcomed and they're welcoming. Absolutely, so welcoming. And and I I, I didn't know what to expect from Sri Lanka you know 
I think it's natural most people compare it to India since it's kind of the, you know, the massive neighboring country right right to the north of the island of Sri Lanka. But um, it was so unique in so many ways. And um, yeah, just the, the kindest people and, and they were really excited to have visitors. You know, they've had some troubles, you know, some economic problems in the news recently. And I, so I think their tourism has has suffered a little bit, but they are, you know, really happy to have visitors and and uh, it was just a great experience. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you had similar experience. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You woke up every day and thought, wow, you know, what a great experience. And I think if you keep that in your mind as you go through places like Sri Lanka, you appreciate it more because you're thinking, well, you know, it's an opportunity to see something different and experience a wonderful culture and everything around that. You mentioned the, uh, the bad publicity in recent times uh, with Sri Lanka around the government and those sorts of things. So they're battling against that. I guess the news tends to focus on those sorts of things and people see those items in the news but my experience and i'm guessing your experience too was that it's it's open and and you can go there and have a great holiday absolutely and you know i think people have a tendency to see any sort of unrest or any sort of issue if you will on the news and think okay well that's a no-go zone it's it's not safe for me and like i'm going to write it off for the next few years and the thing is like it was always a domestic dispute there was it was never anything that would you know endanger foreigners (laughs) And so it, it, they're having some economic problems and a little bit of political unrest, but totally fine, totally open for visitors. And and um, yeah, like I said, they they want people to come and and they're you know open and 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 ready to have people visit. So. Yeah, yeah. How'd you cope with the heat? It was really hot. I mean, there's air conditioning, and um, Colombo is a great city with many places you can stay and you could be comfortable. But uh, yeah, when you go to hot places, you know. Um, it's it's harder to do things throughout the day. You need to take a break. Totally. <laughs> Absolutely. And most of my travels actually for the past few years have been in the Middle East. Um, so I've kind of grown accustomed to that, um, even though my pasty uh, Irish skin is not, uh, you know, built for that. But yeah. yeah, I guess you have to kind of strategize. And, you know, you'll see a lot of the locals uh they might sleep in later and then do more of their activities or socializing after dark. So people kind of adjust, I think, to the climate and you kind of got to follow their lead. Yeah, yeah. And you've become a skilled traveler now. So um, getting out of your comfort zone is something you do do from day to day. Any tips for our listeners and viewers that you, uh, when traveling, what to keep in mind when in a place that you haven't been to before? Anything you've picked up along the way? Don't don't go in completely blind. Don't don't take... um, you know, unnecessary risks, but you can take measured risks. I mean, you should, you should be informed, but then don't restrict yourself so much that you can't enjoy a place, you know? So, uh, know what you need to know, uh, take proper precautions, but, um, really, you know, try to meet local people there. I think that that has been the the single biggest thing for me when traveling is find locals that are kind that are normal people that aren't, um, you know, that aren't necessarily looking for anything from you. And, and if you can meet nice people, they're really going to take you on some experiences that you, you're not going to be able to have on your own. And, uh, you know, they can advise you on what to do, what not to do. So that for me has been has been huge is, is being open to, to those uh, encounters and those experiences. And it'll really unlock, uh, you know, experiences that you can't find on your own. Yes. And you've done a bit of that on, on your uh, YouTube and Instagram where you go with uh, local families in Sri Lanka, for example, and spend some time with local families and... Uh, that's the way to do it. You get really get in and understand uh, the place and uh, the culture. Absolutely. And, and, and I, I think when it comes down to it, you know, travel can be about food. It can be about, you know, historical sites, nature, whatever else. But for me, it always comes down at the end of the day to the people because, I mean, that is really the basis of culture, which is, I think, why we travel. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, when you can interact with, with the local people and, and, and make friends uh, with, you know, the people wherever you're visiting, that is like... That is truly, I think, what leaves an impact. And at the end of the day, I think that's that's really the whole point of travel is that connection. So it's... yes, um, some details about Sri Lanka. The the traffic was nuts. Those three wheelers that you can get, all the tuk tuks that you can get, a lot of scooters and those sorts of things. Um, I was driven around. I assume you were too. I don't know if you were courage, uh, you know, brave enough to drive. But it's just normal. They use the horn to warn everybody, and they swerve in and out of traffic, and it somehow works. It's like an art. It's 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 kind of amazing to behold. It, and, and at least where I come from, the horn is seen as kind of an aggressive thing, yeah. like "Hey, get out of my way." But there, it's it's a it's more of like a courtesy almost because it's yes. it's just notify people like, 
hey, look, we're all not following the lines on the road, so I'm going to give you a little beep when I'm coming up behind you, and then we're both good. Yeah. It was one of the friendliest countries I think I've visited in, in recent memory. I was really, really blown away. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you're currently in Pakistan, so, and you say you've been to the Middle East, so in comparison, you know, favourite places, I know it's a hard question to, uh, to uh, answer, but from a guy who's been around a fair bit, uh, you know, your, your thoughts and feelings in different parts of the world? You know, I love the Middle East for their hospitality and a um, couple of my favorite countries, uh, Iraq, Turkey, and actually Sri Lanka. And I'm not just saying that because it's the topic of the day, but uh, I've been telling people recently, you know, since going there recently, it, it's, it's been one of my, uh, one of my favorites. It, it just blew me away. Yeah. And just, again, like it all comes down to the people. And I found that in, in these uh, countries, it, it's overwhelmingly welcoming and, and just kind, kind people. So that's what really leaves an impact. Yes. Do you think it's, uh, somebody was telling me it's an island nation. So they're used to collaborating and welcoming outsiders because they rely on that, them being this small island, which needs other, other people to sort of help trade and those sorts of things. So maybe it's that or is it just a cultural thing where they just sort of um yeah they just welcome outsiders in a special way yeah that's a good point you know i think it's probably a mix of both i think it's probably partially innate to the culture and partially as you say and you know there's the whole uh, british colonial history and there's a it's a really diverse country i mean there's different uh, ethnic groups living together there different languages and it's, it's kind of this amazing melting pot even though it is a small island yeah, I think it, it all kind of comes together in this really beautiful way. It's mainly a Buddhist sort of country, but as you say, there's all different, they all coexist, you know, all the different religions and everybody. So uh, you're right, it's a melting pot and they all seem to sort of get on. I know we just spoke about the <laughs> the political unrest, but mostly, you know, uh, get on with each other. Yeah, it's actually funny. It's something I, I noticed. Um, I actually said in one of my videos, I was talking to a, a Tamil guy in a market, I which is a, a minority in, uh, in in Sri Lanka, the majority being the Sinhalese. Yes. And I speaking to this Tamil guy, and I said, "Oh, so you're Tamil? Like you speak a different language? You speak Tamil, and you're you're part of the Tamil community?" And he said, "Yes, yes, but we're all Sri Lankan. We're all one country together." It was like he wanted to make that point very clear to me that, yeah, there are there are divisions, but we're all one. It, I thought that was interesting that he he kind of drove that point home. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that is a good point. Uh, and now you're so lean and fit. I know when you travel, and when I was in Sri Lanka, I got fed from the moment I got there till I had left because I, you know, food and uh, you know feeding the the new person was was a big thing. But uh, uh, are you getting fed everywhere you go, uh, Doug? Oh my gosh, absolutely! I don't know if I would say fit, but just uh, skinny. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I mean the food there was insane. It is spicy. Yes. You have to <laughs> have to be ready for that for sure. Um, but oh my gosh, just the the flavors and. Yeah, the food was incredible. Yeah, yeah. I saw you at the fish markets and uh, it, there was, uh, you mentioned the, oh, the string hoppers and as you said, the spicy food. Um, oh, the king coconut. You were drinking the king coconut where they cut the coconut open. And apparently it's really good for you, the stuff in there. You know, it's... Apparently, apparently yeah. so. And I was amazed how they use the coconut. Um, uh, what is it called? Sambal. They, they shave the coconut. Uh, until it's it's down into the you know little bits of shavings and then they'll put some chilies and onions in there and mash it all up and it's like a Sri Lankan staple that they'll eat with almost every meal yeah. and I've always thought of coconut as kind of a sweet desserty kind of kind of uh, food but they turn it into a savory dish they mix yeah. it with all sorts of things it was kind of amazing the, the versatility of it yes there's a, the jackfruit uh, curry and uh you know it tastes like chicken doesn't it it's, it's jackfruit but as you say it's a savory that too yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's amazing really really uh i think underappreciated cuisine i mean you don't see it around so much i think because you know indian food from that region kind of dominates but yeah sri yeah. lankan food was uh it was a good one yeah do you have the best job in the world doug i reckon you got a pretty good job do you in i mean it's a bit of a slog you 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 when i say slog you get there and you create content and you travel a lot so uh, there's that element to it, but um, you're going to look back and think to yourself, gee, as a, as a young man, I had a pretty cool uh, job for a while. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I feel incredibly lucky. It's like with any job, there's always the, the side that you don't see, especially with something like, uh, you know, social media where you're posting the highlights, but, you, yeah. you know, people don't see all of the the work that goes into it yes. and, and, yeah. and the, you know, the 
the long bus rides and, and all those sorts of things. But I mean, this was my dream. And, and so I am so grateful and feel very lucky to, to be able to do this. It's It's uh, been the experience of a lifetime. Wonderful. Well, our listeners and viewers can find you uh, on Instagram. What's the best way just to put you in the search engine type Doug underscore Barnard for Instagram? Correct. Exactly. Right. And also YouTube. Is that your two main sort of platforms? Yeah, I would say so. YouTube is definitely my main platform where I'm sharing most of the content. And Instagram is sort of my day-to-day updates, but uh, okay. all of the adventures go up on YouTube in, in long form. So uh, yeah, just stay in touch. Enjoy your time in Pakistan. And, and thanks so much for joining us here uh, in the studios on the radio and on social media. Thanks for your time, uh, Doug Barnard. Thank you, mate. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Pat. Thank you so much for having me on. It was a pleasure.